everybody. Welcome back to Talk with Naya. So we have some things to talk about today. All right, more footage came out about Cardi B and this whole water splashing incident that we talked about last time. And it looks like Cardi B actually asked fans to throw water on her. But I guess she only wanted it thrown on like her body. And she got pissed when this fan threw water and it landed on her face. I mean, she should have never asked fans to throw water on her at all. Like that definitely changes the whole situation because that could have easily ended bad. And it did, you know, it did. You got ice water thrown hard as hell on your face, but you're asking fans to throw water on you. Like, I don't understand. Celebrities like y'all should just not ask fans to throw anything on you. Because there is a huge issue with fans just in general throwing stuff. All right, look at this. Somebody spans me with my Ooh. Ooh. Wait, no, no, wait, no, no. <laughs> was too bad, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 let me move right here, bitch. <laughs> yeah, bitch. Wait, no, no, wait, wait, Somebody splashed me with water, bitch. Ooh. Now let's move on. Now Summer Walker and Lil Meech break up. Lil Meech was caught on a ring camera going into a girl's apartment and he claimed that he was just helping his cousin with the groceries. But in the video, he didn't have any groceries in his hand. Okay. Now Summer Walker dragged Jada into this by saying, can't do that cheating stuff. Try my best to be Jada Wada, but I couldn't. It was cute though. I wish him the best. Now Jada responded and said, I learned my lesson after one kid. Y'all on here starting your own trends and trying to insert me in for laughs on the shade room. And then Jada's best friend, Destior, said she could have got her point across without mentioning Jada. We've all had our run with a guy, including you. Stop it. Now I do think Meech was cheating on her. I do think he lied about it and then he ended up getting caught right <laughs> on the ring camera <laughs> and i do think that it was foul for summer to take her anger and frustration and then mention another girl's name who had absolutely nothing to do with it like that's not even cool saying i tried to be a jada waiter like why are you mentioning her name in this at all jada done went through her ups and downs with her baby father that's her personal business even if you felt that way like, why put that on social media? That is so disrespectful. Women are supposed to uplift other women, you know? So why are you trying to throw her name into this just because you're mad that your man stepped out on you? Like, have that anger towards your man. Why are you mentioning another woman in all of this? And then I guess Jada's like, you know, she's nice to me, you know, behind the scenes, but she's willing to throw my name out there. I just didn't think that was cool. Now, let's move on. Glorilla gets gifted a Maybag from Yogati for her B-Day. And people are concerned. People are concerned about Glorilla and her financial situation, the deal that she signed with Yogati, making sure that she got money. I mean, I don't know if y'all saw. I don't have the clip of this no more, but she threw a pair of shades out in the crowd when she was performing and then her crew had to go back to that fan and get the shades back because Glorilla didn't own the shades so people just want her to be real careful about you know the things that she's buying listen to this i swear nothing gets past the tiktok universe and the twitter universe and really just the internet universe the metaverse so i saw this come up on my timeline and i had an immediate thought which i guess a lot of other people immediately thought as well but let's watch the video first. So my first thoughts are that, girl, if the CEO of your record label is buying you this, He's not buying it. You're buying it. Because if you are a person who has studied the music industry and you see what is really going on behind the smoke and mirrors of fame and these contracts, then you know that whenever you get money from a record label or pretty much anything from a record label, it is a loan and you have to pay it back. So obviously we got to go to the comments of this video. 
she don't know that she's paying for that herself <laughs> forgot to check the small print lol what is she giving in return exactly she paid for it already with her contract yep this person says hard to believe since she was just repoing a pair of gas station glasses from an audience member didn't hear about that too bad she can't afford it since her music career is in the toilet yikes gift her some glasses so her team don't have to go into crowds and take them away from fans again yikes i noticed a trend he meaning yogati buys everyone on the label on mayback i guess that's for the illusion of success maybe i don't know ruby red kiki says write out the salary <laughs> andrew says talk about a glow up and then lady says i need a man like this although i don't know if you really want a man like that lady because you have to pay that back you'd have to pay that man back for that if you are a musician and you are on a record label and your ceo is gifting you things read the small print this car starts at one hundred seventy thousand dollars but it can go upwards of 200 250 300 depending on how you customize it this info is from experian which helps you to monitor your credit new cars depreciate faster than used cars with the values of a new car typically dropping by over 20 percent after the first year ownership then continuing to depreciate by 10 percent or so each year after that after five years, your car could be worth roughly half of what you initially paid for it. Depreciation tends to slow once a car reaches the five-year mark and essentially stops by the time a car is 10 years old. So let's assume that this truck that she got probably costs around like 250. So that would be 250 times 0.2, which is 20%, and that gives you $50,000. So if $250,000 worth of her contract is going to this asset, really a liability, after one year, she is going to lose $50,000. $50,000 that she could have put into her career, into developing her sound, developing her stage presence, maybe doing a couple of music videos. In my opinion, I don't want a $250,000 car. Give me the $250,000 up front, and I'm going to put that money into real estate. You usually have to put 20 to 30% down for a house. And if you're a first-time homebuyer, there are more discounts that you can get, so you have to put less money down. But let's assume that you have to put 20% down. So that would be the $250,000 that you have divided by the 0.2 or 20% which gives you a budget of 1.25 million to spend on a house. Now what I would do with that is I would actually get a multi-family property for that price in an up and coming neighborhood. And then in like two, three years, you'll be able to buy four, five Maybachs, all with passive income. Not only that, you could buy yourself out of your contract. But I hope you get where I'm going with all this. The fact that people are so amused by these shiny objects is the reasons why they get got. Maybe we're all wrong though, maybe it's not coming out of her contract, but I, I'm pretty sure it is. Either way, be smart and read the fine print, you won't regret it. I mean, we've seen a lot of artists before, they get, like the label buys them stuff. I remember the TLC movie, the label buys them stuff, but the artist doesn't realize that they're actually paying for that. So I think people just want her to be very careful. Now, we got some other news. Some new music is coming out. So Holly is dropping her solo song called Angel on Friday. I can't wait for her music. I've been waiting a long time. And we also have JT coming out with a new song on Friday as well. And then we also have another artist claiming that Beyonce is copying them. I mean, well, Little Kim didn't say copy, but... She said that she got a new project on the way and that great minds think alike and tagged Beyonce. Now, I'm assuming she tagged Beyonce because they both have on this like pointy kind of top. Okay, Beyonce has been coming with a ton of outfits for the Renaissance tour. Now, people need to leave Beyonce alone. If she's wearing a hat or a similar top, it's not that serious that these other artists that have been in the game for a long time that are legends like Erica Badu and Little Kim Y'all don't need to be mentioning that. Y'all need to feel the need to call her out. You know, I'm sure she respects you guys. It's not that serious. It really isn't. It's like people have, if they have any reason to tag Beyonce or come at Beyonce, they will find a way. 
Now, lastly, Lizzo is catching some heat after a lawsuit comes out from her dancers. Listen to this. So I just read through all 37 pages of the lawsuit against Lizzo, her production company, and the captain of her dance squad. And wow, there is a lot in here. I want to try to just give you the highlights and also not get banned because some of this stuff is pretty wild. There are nine different complaints in this lawsuit. Some of the complaints are all of the plaintiffs against all of the defendants, all the defendants being Lizzo, her production company, and her dance captain, Shirley Quigley. And some of the complaints are just one or two of the plaintiffs against maybe one or two of the defendants. The first complaint is hostile work environment. The second complaint is failure to prevent and or remedy hostile work environment. Third is religious harassment. Fourth is failure to prevent and or remedy religious harassment. Fifth is racial harassment. Sixth is disability discrimination. Seventh is intentional interference with prospective economic. Eight is assault. And nine is false imprisonment. So two of the dancers we met on Lizzo's show, Watch Out for the Big Girls, and the third dancer was hired a little bit later. And we also met the dance captain, Shirley Quigley, who is named as a defendant in this suit. So a lot of major claims in this lawsuit center around the dance captain, Shirley Quigley. And it seems, according to this lawsuit, like she was just this uber religious woman and she was constantly trying to like talk about the Lord and trying to convert people and people were uncomfortable with it and she was preaching about how premarital sex was bad and then when she found out one of the dancers in this lawsuit Ariana Davis was a virgin she became like obsessed with this and would just like bring it up and talk about it all the time which obviously made her really uncomfortable. But then it's like really strange because then even though she's like uber religious and preaching all these things, she would also like talk about weird sexual things in front of them. And they said that she had this like what was called a party trick where she would use a banana to simulate, you know what I'm saying, with her mouth. And it was like a thing she did. They say in this lawsuit that it didn't stop there with Quigley and that like in addition to like doing this like simulation with the banana she would talk about how like um pleasing yourself you know is against her religion but then she'd be like but oops today I had an oopsie which is just like strange and they said like that you know they, she would talk about these sort of like sexually explicit comments so much that the entire dance team knew that her fantasy was having let me see how I can put this 10 eggplants in her face they all knew this, apparently. Another of the allegations in the suit is that after performances, Lizzo would invite the dancers out for a night on the town. And then one night in Amsterdam, she had this whole event like in the red light district at this like club where there was like nude cabaret performers. And Ariana Davis says that like, you know, she really didn't want to participate, but like she was being egged on and basically forced to, you know, touch the breast of one of the performer, even though she didn't want to. So what the dancers allege in the suit is that like, even though they didn't want to go to these places and they felt uncomfortable, they felt they had to for job security because they said it was just sort of this like unspoken, you know, thing that dancers who participated in these extracurriculars got preferential treatment by Lizzo and had more job security. Now where the racial discrimination comes in, the dancers say that the production, the management team was mostly white people and that the production team treated the black members of the dance team differently than other members and that allegedly they accused the black members of the dance team of being lazy, unprofessional and having bad attitudes. So then according to this lawsuit, they get back from the European part of this tour and Lizzo is just like unhappy with all the dancers and says like, everyone has to re-audition and your jobs aren't safe. And if, if I don't like the way you audition, you're gonna be fired. And that this audition allegedly turned into this 12 hour day where the dancers just felt like scared to even leave the stage or they were gonna get fired. So the one dancer Davis said like, she, you know, she really had to use the bathroom, but was too scared. So ended up, you know, urinating on herself. So then where the assault and false imprisonment comes in. So two of the dancers, Davis and Williams, were fired. And it was like kind of embarrassing how they did it. They kind of did it publicly. And the other dancer, Rodriguez, like didn't really like how that all went down. So she approached Lizzo and was like, I need to have a talk to you about how you handle the situation. And according to Rodriguez in this complaint, she said that 
Lizzo got really aggressive, approached her, cracking her knuckles, bawling her fists and exclaiming, you're lucky, you're so effing lucky. And she says that she believes that Lizzo intended to hit her and would have done so if one of the other dancers hadn't intervened. And then the false imprisonment comes because Davis said that like, you know, she had been accused of record or she had a, she had recorded a conversation that had happened, but she said that, you know, she has this like anxiety disability where she like can't really process it in the moment. She needs to record things and listen to it later. And the management team and Lizzo were like, you recorded this conversation, got mad. So when they fired her, they like allegedly kept her in this room, like went through her phone until they could like see that she had deleted the file. There's still so much more to unpack with this lawsuit. And now I'm also seeing that other dancers are posting in their stories, sort of corroborating what the dancers in this lawsuit are saying and saying they had similar experiences. So I'm going to keep sharing more as I get more information. Now, Lizzo, what is going on? Because this is serious. This is unacceptable. I would never want to work on anybody's team that was treating their staff like this. Okay, and making them feel this uncomfortable. I mean, even Beyonce is skipping Lizzo's name, you know, in her performance during the Renaissance tour where she shouts out a ton of artists that she loves. This is very serious. She needs to fix this. And this definitely makes Lizzo look horrible. Okay, absolutely horrible. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.